Spurs Mini Day is over. What are our takeaways and some injury news? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs and the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kings 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Training camp is today. And yesterday was Media Day. We're going to be looking back at Media Day 2022 for your Spurs. Uh, some of the highlights, you know, if you already knew what the season was going to be about, then you pretty much attended Media Day because from Popovich to Primo, everybody just said the obvious. Also, we're going to look at some big uh, Spurs injury news. Kelvin Johnson is likely to miss the preseason in action due to a sh- shoulder injury. We'll discuss that and a lot more. I am joined by my good friend. He is with Sweep, uh, Sweep the League. He is Rudy Campos. Rudy, y- you didn't need a crystal ball to predict what they're going to say at media day, did you? No, definitely didn't. Didn't need to get the Zoltar machine to give me a reading or fortune. We kind of had an idea how media day and the season was going to go. Yeah. By the way, everybody, thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts. Let's dive into it, Rudy. And by the way, everybody, uh, Rudy's short on time, so we're just going to have him for a couple segments uh, today on Lockdown Spurs. <laughs> he is a busy man. He's has He has dad duties, don't you? Yeah, my daughter, unfortunately, needs to go to the eye doctor, so i got to take care of that. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get you in and out of here as soon as we can. Uh, let's start off with Popovich. He kicked off uh, media day yesterday. Said the obvious, uh, jokingly, uh, he whispered to the media on hand that everybody should be rushing to Vegas right now to place the bets on the Spurs winning the 2022-23 NBA title. Jokingly, he was just poking fun. But the obvious truth is he summed up what everybody knows, Rudy, that this team is is in for full rebuild and title dreams are far away. Yeah, you know, the the pop comment is probably going to rattle a lot of people, and I'm sure it already has, and it, it's okay. But you know what? Pop is just being pop. He's giving you the honest-to-God truth. The team's not – it's not good on paper. I mean, if you look at it, it's nothing but young guys. It's going to be the building block for the future for the San Antonio Spurs. And he's just being honest, but it also helps Spurs fans realize, like, hey, you know, let's not go into the season thinking that – we're even a playing team. We don't know that right now. Right now, Pop has no idea. He just knows that the team he has in front of him is not a championship contending team. Could it change throughout the year? You know, could you see a magical run? It could happen. Anything can happen in sports. You just don't know. Yeah. And look, that's the sentiment with the fan base. I think at this point now with the season just right around the corner, I know preseason is this this weekend, but nevertheless, as far as the real games – we know it's going to be rough. We'll talk about it on a future episode of Lockdown Spurs, but that opening month of the schedule is just, you know, a gauntlet that might really rattle this young team. But one thing that Popovich did bring up during his press conference was that everybody's going to be thrown into the fire. And I think that's the approach this team has to take, Rudy. Yeah, you've got to take it. You've got only a couple of guys that are like true veterans and have been, you know, uh, with, in the NBA uh, long term, but you're right. It's a fire. It's a fire by committee, basically. You're, you're going to throw everybody in there, see what they can do. There's going to be a lot of learning curves. There's going to be a lot of bumps and bruises trying to figure things out. But as long as you see the coaching staff pop really uh, at the head of it, giving these guys the opportunity, then you should see some kind of development from this team. And it may happen pretty quick. It may not take an entire season. But you should see some improvement from this team as long as they buy into Pop in the Spurs system. One thing I want to uh, touch base with you is something that Pop also said, and it's been in the minds of a lot of Spurs fans, is who's going to be on that starting five? Which starting five? Is Primo going to get the uh, starting nod at point guard? Is it it, uh, it Trey Jones? What about Keldon, who we'll talk about later? Uh, But Pop, all but said, there's only one player that's going to, as of right now, that is on that starting unit, and that's Jakob Pertl. What does that say to you? It's a free for all, and he's going to allow the guys to dictate and determine who's going to get the minutes. And that's actually a good thing because coming into the season, I am pretty much sure everybody, media guy, fan guy included, that Keldon Johnson would be a starter no matter what. 
And for here, Pop to say, well, there's only one true starter, and that's Jakob Hurdle, shows that, hey, we're just going to wipe the board completely clean. There's no, you know, there's no starters. There's no nothing. You guys come into camp. You guys prove to me, and we're going to put the best starting five out there that we possibly can. So it's a really good thing for this first team. He is Rudy Coppers with Sweep the League. Make sure to follow him on Twitter, at Sweep the League. Let's uh, discuss more what was said at Media Day 2022. Again, you didn't need a crystal ball, everybody. You know, somebody asked me uh, at Ken's, you know, if I was going to go to the uh, the training camp. I said, here's the training camp summed up. We're young. We ain't making the playoffs. We ain't going to the titles. Somebody's going to say this team has tit- uh, playoff aspirations. Rebuild. That's exactly what you're going to get. That's going to be the exact storylines for the entire season. Um, I, I think it's spicy towards the end of the season. If the Spurs are circling the drain, Rudy, and chasing, you know, a top spot to get into the draft top three you know the race to tank but josh primo uh, spoke with media and he said the sentiment among the players right now is playoffs you gotta love the kid but maybe he hasn't read the memo yet rudy yeah i mean you you've got to stay positive no matter if your team is not expected to make the playoffs or is even a contending team we all know hey championship contending teams can go down in a and a bunch of flames, you know, due to injuries and stuff. But I like Primo's confidence. Yeah, I mean, what yeah, I, mean that, yeah. I like Primo's confidence a whole lot. And that's the good thing about these guys is that they're coming in. And you know what? Look at the whole picture. They're coming in with no expectations. They're saying playoff teams. But in reality, it's no expectations, which is the best kind of team. Because when you have nothing to lose, that's when you actually make things happen. Yeah. Like you, 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 you get that the players, they're competitive. You get that aspect of their mindset. They're in the NBA for a reason because they have what it takes. And part of that is having a competitive spirit. So they're going to really try to get W's out there on the court. But all signs are pointing that this team is going to be circling the drain. Uh, we mentioned that opening month is just, it's hell. It's, it's bad. It's yeah. really bad as far as the competition level. I mean, just right out the bat. And right out the bat, too, you get Kawhi Leonard. Like, what, the first, what, second, third week? You know, who's back, yeah. and the Clippers are all recharged, and you got the Lakers, you got the Denver Nuggies. You got the, it's just really, really, really um, a bad time. So hopefully, hey, hopefully the Spurs will uh, shock people and play well. But as of right now, it seems that rebuild is the idea going into this <laughs> season. Look. No, nobody should be surprised by this. This whole t- this whole label of rebuilding has been going on for a while. Popovich said it at the bubble in the Orlando bubble years ago. We're going into the Orlando bubble just trying to evaluate talent and and, and, and see what we have. And I think that's the exact same sentiment as we're going to see this upcoming uh, season. It, you, one other thing that was mentioned at um, at media day for the Spurs is. The fact that, well, Devin Vassell, he spoke and he talked about what he's getting better on. You know, I think he mentioned uh, free throws and getting to the rim. How big of a a leap are you expecting Devin Vassell to take this upcoming season, Rudy? You know, evaluating all the talent from my end, I expect Vassell to take a pretty big leap this year. Uh, I I, I mean, we all saw what Keldon did and his leap, but I expect Devin to – ultimately be this is kind of weird coming from you know me because i haven't said it much but i really expect devin to be that guy i mean he came into the league and i i talked to a lot of uh former nba players and we kind of we kind of agree to it he's kind of he's got that little bit of scotty pippen in him he can play both mm-hmm. sides of the ball he's lengthy he can get to the basket he just has to learn to finish his jump shot improved throughout the year last year he was knocking down the three. He seems like he can be that two-way player that the Spurs need. I like Keldon's game. He can get to the basket. He's still going to improve some. But when we're talking leaps and bounds, I think going into this season, Devin is that guy to watch who's probably going to be that next guy for the Spurs where you're going to expect him to come in and take over that leadership role. Absolutely. Now, before uh, we go into our segment two, talking about the injury to Keldon Johnson, this pretty much summed up media day and may sum up the entire season, Rudy. This is from Popovich. Yesterday he says, but that's not the point. Very honestly, I could care less. You all know what I care about. 
but the point is to develop this group and give them the best possible opportunity to have a long NBA career and enjoy the hell out of it. There it is. Uh, you don't hear any type of playoff aspirations, playing aspirations, title aspirations. It is just what it is, a development season, a.k.a. Tank for Wimby. And that's pretty, pretty much what it is. Go, <laughs> go, uh, Tank. The Tank season is here, or the rebuild season, I should say. Excuse me. When we get back, we're going to talk about a uh, kind of a big injury already ahead of the season start, and that is to Kelton Johnson. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about Bet Online. You got to go to betonline.net right now. It's your number one source for all your football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in depth articles and analysis you can find anywhere. And as always, Bet Online remains your continuous source for all your sport and wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events and games, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Go to betonline.net right now. You got yourself a mobile device. Learn more about everything you need over at Bet Online. Hey, Popovich said, don't rush to Vegas to place a bet, but maybe you're going to take the odds. You know, maybe you're like Captain Solo, you know, never tell me the odds. Well, go place a bet on the uh, Spurs uh, title chances over at betonline.net. Bet Online, where the game starts. We're back right here on Lockdown Spurs with Rudy Campos. He is with Sweep the League, and we're talking all things Spurs as training camp uh, begins today. And we just finished talking about media day, which occurred yesterday. A big news coming out uh, ahead of media day in training camp was an injury to Keldon Johnson. I kind of threw everybody off a little bit, but there are were some saying that, yay, the tank is here. <laughs> That's how you do it, Spurs. Keep out your best player. But the good news is, everybody, the Spurs report that he will be available. He's, he's expected to be available for the start of the regular season. Likely going to miss the Spurs preseason slate. Likely will miss some time at the uh, training camp. Here is the actual injury update. San Antonio Spurs forward Kelton Johnson suffered a right shoulder posterior dislocation during Spurs open gym and has started actively rehabbing. So there it is. Uh, basically, he dislocated his shoulder. Uh, Rudy, I, I know for Tank is yay, but uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, what do you think about the Spurs already dealing with Kelton Johnson uh, getting banged up? Well, definitely when you're starting the season, you know, banged up and, you know, Kelton's supposed to be ready for the start of the season. Uh, it's going to affect him definitely. I mean, yeah, he might be ready for game one, but he's going to be missing out on all the training camp. Uh, pretty much the preseason as well. So he's going to have to get into game shape, which is going to be kind of hard for him. Uh, but, you know, the whole tank for, you know, Wemby and everything, I mean, yeah, it's it's on that kind of sense of like, well, Keldon is injured, we're starting to see he's injured, that's going to help us, you know, get a better draft pick, all that kind of stuff. I kind of don't really look at that a whole lot. I mean, he's still going to be ready for the actual season to start. I mean, if he comes out of the gates fast, great. If he comes out of the gates slow, it's kind of expected because of the injury. It's something that I'm really not too concerned about. The only part is when it's a dislocation, I really feel that they're they're really reaching on that. I really think he's going to miss a few games to start the season. A dislocation definitely is going to affect you. So knowing Pop and the training staff, it kind of just said, yeah, he'll be ready for game one, but I really think they're going to hold him out a little while longer. Yeah, yeah, the Spurs, historically, since Pop has been around, you know, take their time with players getting injured, coming back on the court. Zach Collins is a good example of that. But, yeah, you know, you know, I'm glad it happened ahead of the regular season. I'm glad it happened during meaningless games. You know, the preseason games are really just there to evaluate talent. And the I guess the real, quote-unquote, preseason games are not until, what, the last one or two is when yeah. you really start seeing lineups form. Good point, though. I didn't think about that. Yeah, he's probably behind the curve as far as meshing with his new teammates or maybe teammates he's going to play more time with, not like Josh Primo. So that will inhibit him. But I, I don't expect too much of a uh, big loss. You know, If the goal is to simply get the race of the most L's, well, good job, Spurs. You're starting off on the right foot. But, yeah, it's a big injury. Now, we're, we're going to have another guest as soon as we let you go and – you know, about the Kelton Johnson injury, but, you know, a quick hint. Uh, he talked about it with me, and he said that a little suspicious because that type of injury, 
happens at with high velocity. Mm-hmm. So he said you have to have that type of dislocation, like if a bull hits you or a charging bull hits you or a train hits you. So he yeah. thinks there's more to it than that. We'll we'll dive into that later. But Kelvin Johnson, you know, durable. You know, he's really hasn't missed any significant time during his uh, short NBA career. But the good news is, I guess, is that we're going to get to see Devin Vassell in some sort of leadership role, at least during the preseason games and, of course, during training camp. I think that's a positive ripple effect in this. Uh, Rudy, what do you think? Yeah, for sure. And like I mentioned earlier uh, on the show, you know, I expect Devin to take that next step as a leader in the locker room and on the court. I mean, his his uh, improvement this year, I feel, just by seeing him in the offseason and seeing what he's been done uh, and the way he finished last season, spelling, you know, without DeJounte, without Derek White, I think he's that one guy that's going to step up. He can easily point to guys like Jakob and Trey Jones, but I haven't seen anything out of those guys that says, hey, you're going to be that leader in the locker room or on the floor. It's guys like Keldon and Devin, especially Devin, that's going to take that leadership role. I, I expect a whole lot from Devin Vassell this year. So with the Keldon injury, you're probably going to see Devin do a lot more on the court this season for the San Antonio Spurs on and off the court. Uh, but also, I, I mean, this is also another thing, too. You're going to see a, probably a lot more of Jeremy Sohan now that Keldon may be out, even if it is into the regular yeah. season you'll get a lot more yeah. of Sohan this year. Yes, good point, too. It, it does free up minutes preseason-wise for players like Vizel to get bulk of more touches. Uh, you mentioned Sohan. Uh, you know, maybe some of the fringe players, you know, your Dominic Barlows, uh, you know, those ones that are expecting to see and play in Austin, uh, those, those fringe players. It's going to mm-hmm. give them time to shine. And it also, you know, preserves Kelden. I mean, the good news is he's young. You know, he... he you know, it's not like he's, you know, an aged veteran in the NBA, although he's veteran for the Spurs purposes. But, yeah, he's ready to step up in a leadership role. But I think this is really going to give uh, the Spurs coaching staff, Popovich, more time to see what they have on the roster outside of Kelvin Johnson. And even, hey, who knows, maybe you see Zach Collins. is What has he got? You know, now this is going to be his first full <laughs> season, you, yeah. you know, without having dealing with an injury. What, what has he got? And you know, maybe play with lineups, you know, Gorgie Dang, give him more minutes out there. What can he contribute? It's going to be an interesting preseason, which gets going this week. And I cannot believe the preseason game is here. Uh, Rudy, we know we got to let you go because you got dad duties. Uh, tell us what's going on over at Sweep the League. Yeah, with the media day kicking off, that means the preseason is kicking off, like Jeff mentioned. So we've got a lot of NBA talk, NFL talk. The NFL season is – uh, it's a mind-scratching thing right now, so we're going to go through all that, as well as we've got baseball playoffs coming up, a ton of sports going on. So, yeah, check us out on Sweep the League every single Monday night. And make sure to follow Rudy on Twitter, at Sweep the League, and ask him, uh, you know, how, how he deals with his fame. Uh, you know, he, if you you have that problem, you know, Rudy is is an expert about that. He knows what it is to be famous in San Antonio. So make sure to let him know your thoughts on Sweep the League, at Sweep the League. But, Rudy, we thank you for uh, hopping on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. When we get back, we're going to have a special guest. He's in a, it's a doctor who specializes in the injuries that we saw with Kelton Johnson. He's going to talk to us more in depth about that type of injury and why he's a little scratching his head a bit over the report or is the the release the Spurs sent about KJ's shoulder uh, dislocation. All right, and we are back with a very special guest. He is medical doctor Ryan McCorkle. He's a ER doctor at St. David's Medical Center and at the Austin Emergency Center. And he, he's also with the medical and concierge medicine practice. He's going to tell you all about that in just a few moments. But Ryan, thank you for joining Locked On Spurs. Appreciate you. Hey, thanks for having me. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, so so you know how Ryan and I got uh, linked up was when the Spurs released the uh, news that Kelvin Johnson is set to miss uh, the uh, preseason slate, uh, likely going to miss some time in training camp. Why? Due to a separated shoulder. Now, so I put that out there, and Ryan, the medical doctor he is, gets a hold of me. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Reread to me again that that uh, injury report. I reread to him. And then, you know, Ryan says, you know what? It's a little bit of a head scratcher. So, Ryan, let's go to just recap exactly what the Spurs released. Uh, this was on 924-22. San Antonio Spurs forward Kelton Johnson suffered a right 
shoulder posterior dislocation during Spurs Open Gym and has started actively rehabbing. Spurs went on to say that he'll miss the Spurs, the, the preseason schedule, but will be ready for the start of the regular season. Now, Ryan, that really kind of made your eyebrow raised up a little bit. Uh, can you explain to me why did that happen to you? Yeah, the uh, the the terminology posterior shoulder dislocation really really got my attention as it does probably any ER doctor or or orthopedist because uh, posterior dislocations are pretty uncommon, like between two and five percent of all shoulder dislocations. So ninety five to ninety seven percent are anterior, and that is the majority of what we see by far. Mm -hmm. So when they said posterior dislocation, I was like, huh, that is very interesting or maybe maybe a, a, a mistake. Maybe they meant to put anterior and yeah. posterior got put in there because posterior is usually from a seizure, a lightning strike, or people who put their hand up on a dash when they're in a car accident. It takes mm -hmm. that much posterior rather than anterior. Right, so basically in a nutshell, the type of injury that Keldon Johnson reportedly suffered uh takes a lot of force I, he has to either be running at a hundred miles an hour and smack into something or vice versa now one thing i want to just run a, run with you first though is that kelvin johnson is a is an avid uh weightlifter he's into you know a lot of weightlifting videos he's also known to jump into the boxing ring during off-season training throwing a lot of the shoulder you know using a lot of the shoulder for the punches for training could that be a reason as to why somebody could suffer an injury the way KJ did? I mean, it's you could do it in any of those ways. I guess it, it says it happened in an open gym. So, I mean, you could fall on it. Somebody could run into you at full speed, that kind of thing. But it's still, the majority of those would still be anterior dislocations. To have a posterior dislocation where the, the actual head of the humerus is forced behind the shoulder joint is unusual. Uh, mm -hmm. even for weightlifting, for boxing, for basketball, any of those. Mm -hmm. it, just because, like you said, you're usually talking the level of force in a car accident or a lightning strike or having right. a pretty severe seizure being the, the most common mechanisms for a posterior dislocation. Uh, are all those things within the realm of possibility? Sure. Are they statistically likely? No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, now, as you know, I think everybody listening in right now knows that Kelton Johnson knows only one speed on the court and that is full throttle it's not uncommon for him as we've seen throughout his short career of him just being a bull charging his way to the rim now and, and i know what you're trying to get at is you know it, it takes a lot of force to suffer that kind of injury but do you factor in his height his size body mass perhaps the opponent he's going into that could cause a collision of that magnitude because the spurs do say it happened during open gym well, sure. I mean, we're talking about NBA athletes who are, you know, incredibly large and generate a whole lot of speed and force, you know, way more than, than the average person that we're going to see, you know, in an ER or the hospital uh, with those injuries. H having said that, especially, you know, Kelvin Johnson, you can see from uh, the way he's built. And like you said, his, his uh, affinity for weightlifting, he's got a mm -hmm. lot of muscle mass around that shoulder, which really protects the, the shoulder girdle. Uh, mm -hmm. the rotator cuff, which means it will require even more force to dislocate that shoulder posteriorly through all that muscle mass. But like you said, when he's going full speed and you're dealing with his size and mm -hmm. the amount of force generated by those that he's playing against, sure, it's it's definitely possible because those are not the forces that the average human is uh, subjected to on a regular right. basis. Right. Once again, we're here with Ryan McCorkle. He is an ER doctor at St. David's Medical Center and at the Austin Emergency Center. He's also with the Backstage Medical and Concierge Medicine Practice. Again, he'll talk all about that in just a few minutes. And we're discussing Keldon Johnson's in shoulder dislocation injury and why it was a bit of a head scratcher for uh, Ryan here. Uh, right. You know, he seemed to be in good spirits. Uh, you know, he wasn't wearing any type of heavy, you know, brace or a sling or nothing during media day yesterday. Uh, you look at the tract of him to coming back to the court and the Spurs are projecting him or at least they're almost certain that he'll be back for the regular season. Um, how long does usually an injury of, of this, as the Spurs describe, take? Uh, you know, is it kind of a shorter recovery period or do you expect 
I guess what I'm trying to get at is, Ryan, would you be surprised if as the regular season comes close to the Spurs, say, you know what, we're going to hold them out a little longer now? If Kelvin Johnson is going to proceed with a non-surgical approach to rehabbing this injury, then he can absolutely be back for the beginning of the season. And that is a very common way to deal with this. Just relocate the shoulder joint where it goes, do some physical therapy, some strengthening of the musculature around that joint to stabilize it, and you go forward. Does it make you prone to recurrent dislocations? Yes, it does. But going in and tightening down those ligaments uh, and doing a surgical intervention would put him out much, much longer um, and probably wouldn't be back for the regular season. So it sounds like they're going to go with the the more common, more conservative approach of, of non-surgical intervention, which is probably the right course of action uh, for the initial injury, uh, probably just a, a freak accident. And uh, yeah. you, you may be more prone to dislocating in the future, but he should be fine and good to go by the beginning of the season. So we shouldn't be surprised to see perhaps Kelton Johnson back on the court prep with extra padding or, or maybe uh, some sort of compression shirt on him just to uh, eliminate possible re-dislocation of that shoulder. Yeah, you know, the, you know, the way it got your attention – you know, you were quick on your feet. You're like, whoa, Jeff, this, this, are you sure about this injury? That, that really got your attention. But the Spurs are known to uh, really take care of their players, you know, be 10 times cautious than anybody else throughout the league. But, uh, Ryan, you look at the head of the season, it, it's right around the corner. So we know what Kelton Johnson is going through. Uh, you laid it all out that it's probably a freak accident or, you know, perhaps more than just an open gym injury. Uh, I got to ask you though, even if the Spurs say he'll be back for the regular season, let's just say he does. And there, you mentioned the non-surgical, what type of precautions would you take if you were his physician? Uh, I mean, you're going to do the physical therapy. You're going to do the targeted strengthening around that shoulder girdle. And um, I mean, that's kind of really all you can do. Can you brace things so that he feels more comfortable? Sure. Is that really going to prevent a recurrent dislocation? No. Um, he, he won't require any of that. You may wear it for comfort. But uh, the, the odds are it's not going to re-dislocate on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was most likely just a, a one-time freak injury. Most of the time it would be like with your hands over your head and then force mm-hmm. applied down. Or it happens a lot to basketball players if they're taking the ball from a low position to bringing mm-hmm. it very quickly and forcefully up and somebody comes down on the ball, a lot right. of times their shoulder will pop, uh, dislocate anteriorly right. in that situation. But there's nothing you can do about that. Those are freak plays. Um, I would think that he, once he's done the rehabilitation uh, and strengthened everything around that shoulder girdle, that he's going to be fine for the rest of the season. Yeah, yeah and that's the good news. is the, re- the regular season is right around the corner, and you know, from your thoughts on it to what the Spurs released during their press conference slash press release regarding his surgery. I mean, his injury, excuse me. Uh, he should be fine. But while I got you here, Ryan, I got to ask you about another a spur that will likely be getting back on his feet for a full season for the first time in quite some time. That is Zach Collins. As you know, uh, he had been sidelined for nearly a season, a season and a half due to a, a bad ankle injury and several other injuries. But now he's going to get his first full season uh, under his belt again in quite some time. Just as a physician, what would you be cautious about putting a player out like Zach Collins back on that court, ready to go? Just kind of let him loose and see what happens? Or do you still kind of just take those extra steps? I mean, for for Zach, yeah, he's just been really unlucky with – he had that really bad uh, grade two ankle sprain that required surgery. Uh, He had the shoulder. He had also had a shoulder dislocation like Keldon Johnson um, right. and then ended up having surgery on his and was out for almost an entire season. Um, but now rehabbing this knee, I think what you want is for the, the player to be comfortable making all the basketball movements without hesitation, without it being in his head that he's favoring that knee because, I mean, you want them to be able to go full bore not favor it because you're just setting yourself up to injure the opposite knee or re-injure the knee that you've already injured if it's right. in your head and you're favoring it anyway. So right. you want to hold him out until he's ready to go complete, full out, without thinking about it. Absolutely. Once again, he is Ryan McCorkle, 
And he's now going to brag about his practice, how you can find it, and tell us more about what you do at Backstage Medical and Concierge Medicine and what else you got cooking. Well, I appreciate that. Um, well, first of all, what you said about the Spurs medical staff is 100% true. I went to medical school at UT Health Science Center there in San Antonio and did my rotation with the Spurs medical staff back then uh, in 2002 to 2005, and they were incredible. Uh, and wonderful, and they really do take care of the the uh, the players above and Absolutely. beyond uh, what anybody could expect. So they are the, some of the best in the league, and, and I definitely want to sing their praises, and they were really good to me when I was a medical student as well. Uh, what I'm awesome. doing now, uh, I work for St. David's Medical Center. I'm also the medical director for the, uh, the stadiums for UT football and Austin FC uh, soccer. So we'll be mm-hmm manning the stadium uh, for all the home games for UT football and for all the home games for Austin FC. Uh, If you need us, you just look for the St. David's medical tent. Uh, I also work for Austin Emergency Center, which uh, does great emergency care uh, freestandings here in in Austin, Texas. We've got six locations around Austin. And then uh, I also do backstage medical uh, concierge medicine for our artists. Um, because Austin is the live music capital of the world. So yes. uh, all our big music venues here, uh, the Moody Center, the Moody Theater, ACL Live, Stubbs, Emos, uh, all our major music venues. I take care of the artists and crew and also the ACL Festival, which we got coming up for two mm-hmm. weekends in October. I've been the doctor there for 10 years. So I take care of the artists and crew uh, there as well. So anybody who needs backstage or a concierge uh, doc, they, uh, they can find me. I'm on... Uh, on Twitter at Austin ER Doc, uh, and I'm on uh, Instagram at Austin EM Doc. Uh, if you are <laughs> looking for me and need any help, uh, I appreciate that. Anytime. Hopefully, uh, Doctor, we can make this a regular visit here at Lockdown Spurs <laughs> to give us your update and your thoughts on the Spurs injuries. Knock on wood, nothing major happens. But if they do, we'll, they'll likely will. I'm pretty sure uh, Ryan uh, will have something to say. Once again, he is Dr. Ryan McCork. Go follow him on Twitter at Austin ER Doc. Got to thank you, Ryan. Appreciate you all this time here on Lockdown Spurs. And yeah, I, I'm glad you reacted that way. Otherwise, you, you know, I would have been just my head in the air like, oh, it's just shoulder dislocation. But you educated the entire Spurs fan base. Way to go, doctor. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that. It's one of those buzzwords <laughs> where it's like, oh, man, this is. Somebody got struck by lightning. Somebody been in a car accident. It really uh, gets your your ER doc uh, antenna up when you see close to your dislocation. So I'm glad we could talk yeah. about it and, and educate the fans today. Thank you so much. Uh, we want to thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. And now for your second listen, check out Locked On NBA. Everything you need in the NBA in just 30 minutes. And as well, check out Fantasy Basketball. That is a Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Josh Lloyd hosts the number one daily fantasy basketball show on the planet, free and available wherever you get podcasts. So for Dr. Ryan McCorko and our other guest, Rudy Campos, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock in this episode of Locked On Spurs. Mm-hmm.